Welcome to a live BYU devotional broadcast. Today, Elder Neil L. Anderson of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will address the campus community. The devotional originates from the Marriott Center on the BYU campus. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to our devotional. Today we will have the privilege of hearing Elder Neil L. Anderson, a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. We extend a special welcome to Sister Anderson, as well as their family members and friends who are here. We invite you to join us next Tuesday at this same time and place for another campus devotional, when we will be pleased to hear from Elder Kevin S. Hamilton at General Authority 70. The prelude today was provided by Neil Harmon, an adjunct faculty member in the School of Music. Andrew Crane, a professor in the School of Music, led us in singing the opening hymn. This morning's invocation will be offered by Michael Ebert, a sophomore pre-business major from Bountiful, Utah, and a grandson of Elder and Sister Anderson. Following the opening prayer, the BYU singers will sing, The Lord is My Light. They will be conducted by Andrew Crane and accompanied on the piano by Hannah Klassen, a senior majoring in accounting from Cedar City, Utah, and David Keim, a senior piano and organ performance major from Provo, Utah. Now the prayer by Brother Ebert. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be gathered here as students and faculty and we are grateful that we could be here with Elder and Sister Anderson. And please bless Elder Anderson as he speaks today that he may have thy spirit and tell us the things that we need to hear at this time. And please bless us that we may also be receptive to the spirit and that we can hear the things that we need to know of what we can change and how we can strengthen our testimonies. And we are so grateful for thee and for thy son and thank thee for thy son's atonement that allows us to r return to thee. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you. 
Thank you, BYU singers, Brother Crane and Sister Klassen and Brother Kaim. Thank you for sharing your talents with us. Your music has inspired us and has set a wonderful tone for the remainder of the meeting. We're pleased to have Elder Neil L. Anderson as our speaker this morning. Elder Anderson was called to the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in April 2009. He graduated from Brigham Young University, where he was a Hinckley Scholar, and then earned a master's degree in business administration from Harvard University. Elder Anderson and his wife Kathy are the parents of four children. And now we'll have the pleasure of hearing from Elder Neil L. Anderson. <coughs> Good morning. Kathy and I are so happy to be with you today. I just left a meeting of the Quorum of the Twelve, and I bring you their love as well as the love of the First Presidency. We think about you. We pray for you. We talk about your future. We love you, admire you, and are lifted every time that we have a chance to be with you. Thank you, choir for that marvelous arrangement of The Lord is My Light. The words of that hymn are worth thinking about. The Lord is my light, the Lord is my strength. I know in His might I'll conquer at length. My weakness in mercy is He covers with power, and walking by faith I am blessed every hour. Beautiful, beautiful words. Sitting on the stage are some of your fellow students who will help me today. So thankful to all of you and for your wonderful contributions. Fifty years ago this past November, I completed my mission to France and, re and returned home to my family's small dairy farm in Idaho. Milking cows morning and night, I realized how much I needed to get an education. I had attended BYU one year prior to my mission, and I returned to BYU exactly 50 years ago this month. I borrowed the money I needed for school, found a job, and began my classes. About a year later, I met Kathy. It was the greatest day of my life. Here's a picture of our first date. Not many have a picture of their first date. <laughs> I'm hoping the bell-bottom pants return to style. <laughs> we had hopes and dreams, and we made plans for our future together. A year later, we were married in the Salt Lake Temple. It's hard to believe that Kathy and I have now been married nearly 48 years. What are your hopes and plans for your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for the next 50 years? Looking back 50 years later, will your faith in the Savior be the most powerful force that moved you forward? How will you withstand the temptations and pressures that seek to diminish your faith in Jesus Christ? If the Savior has not returned, how will you keep the flame of your faith burning brightly for the next five decades? These are important questions for you today. If you are determined to be a disciple of Jesus Christ all the days of your life, you will be, and you will have remarkable blessings that will be yours. Let me share a few thoughts I have learned in the past 50 years about how to allow your faith in Jesus Christ to guide your life. My friends on the stage will add their comments as we go along. As you know, you are a son or daughter of God. That is an absolute truth. Within each of us is a yearning, a longing, a hungering of our spirit to have a deep relationship and eternal connection with our Heavenly Father. This is true of all people, even those who do not recognize it. Two weeks ago, during the first quarter of an NFL football game, 
After a very routine tackle, the safety, Damar Hamlin, fell to the ground lifeless. Teammates, coaches, then doctors and medical personnel rushed to his side. As the ambulance arrived on the field, an assistant trainer and medical staff worked to resuscitate his lifeless body. The stadium, filled with cheering fans moments before, became quiet. The ambulance rushed him to the hospital. Then something very unexpected happened. These seemingly invincible football players, so strong and confident only a few moments before, began kneeling on the playing field. Before a stadium of spectators and a large television audience, the entire Buffalo Bills team knelt and prayed fervently for their teammate, Damar Hamlin. In the hours and days that followed, all the NFL teams headlined their websites with the plea, pray for Damar. In a remarkable expression of faith, an ESPN commentator bowed his head and prayed out loud to God on air. While many people do not always speak openly about their faith in God, they very naturally believe in God. And in times of crisis, their prayers and hopes ascend to God. We are so very grateful for the miracle of Damar Hamlin's recovery. Prayer is vital to faith in Jesus Christ. Prayer draws us closer to God. He hears and answers our prayers. If you feel your faith diminishing, pray more sincerely and more frequently. Next, live your life with hope in Christ. Just a week ago, Elder and Sister Holland spoke to us about this hope. Do you remember these words? Accompanying that bright hope will be the undeniable whisper that God loves you, that Christ is your advocate, that the gospel is true. Its brightness will remind you that in the gospel, there is always, every day, a new chance, a new life, a new year. Because of Christ's gift, the best things in life are ours. To keep a brightness of hope, it will be important for you to be right before the Lord. We're not perfect, and we all need to follow President Nelson's counsel about daily efforts to change, to repent. Elder Holland said, life is difficult enough without carrying a pack of mistakes around on your back. Unload them. Change anxiety for peace. President, M, President Russell M. Nelson said, Hope emanates from the Lord. Only an eternal perspective of God's great plan of happiness can we ever find a more excellent hope. Have you heard the old statement that hope springs eternal? It can only be true if that hope springs from him who is eternal. Okay, my next point. Keep your spirit open to seeing the hand of the Lord in your daily life. Our friends on the stage will teach you this principle. If you can see him and you can take your decisions to him and like, or acknowledge like, you know, this would not have happened if I hadn't been praying or if I didn't know about the gospel. And if you let it be a bigger part of your life, you start seeing the miracles and you start seeing the blessings. And so your testimony grows just as you try to look for, for God and for our Savior in, in your everyday life in the little things. When you look for God's hand in your life, you see that he's always there and always reaching out where it may just be someone was put in your life that day or that um, something went your way, that he helped put you in um, a place that you needed to be.
There's a lot of things that I'm not good at and that I can't, whether it was learning Spanish on the mission, getting to BYU, realizing the classes are a lot harder than I expected, um, just getting up in the morning some days, and, and it's tough. And like sometimes I want to just be like, oh, I can just do this by myself. But definitely like having the opportunities to find out like, oh, well, if I just ask the Lord, he can help me out and he can help me get through those trials. And, and so many times in our lives, not intentionally, but we end up being prideful and we're like, oh, I'll be fine. Like, I'll be fine. Like, I don't need to ask the Lord. But like once I was able to see that throughout my life, I rely on him every day. He is going to help me. There's an art, a lovely piece of art that I love. I don't know who painted it, but it's called Hand in Hand. And one of the reasons I love it is because there's a little girl who looks like me. Um, and and uh, that just means so much to me. But I think the main thing is that it, it always helps me visualize that there is that loving, just, merciful, all-knowing, a uh, perfect God and Savior and the Holy Spirit that love us and that are walking and uh, right along, right alongside us. Many years ago, I learned something very important from President Eyring. He determined as a young father to ponder every night how the Lord's hand was blessing his life. Here are his words. I wrote down a few lines every day for years. Before I would write, I would ponder this question. Have I seen the hand of God reaching out to touch my wife and me and our children today? As I kept at it, something began to happen. As I would cast my mind over the day, I would see evidence of what God had done for one of us that I had not recognized in the busy moments of the day. As that happened, and it happened often, I realized that trying to remember had allowed God to show me what he had done. Consider following President Eyring's example. Some of your experiences will be small and simple, and others will stay in your righteous mind forever. Next, remember the restored gospel of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a gift and a protection for your faith. Someone might ask, can I be a disciple of Jesus Christ and not be a participating member of the Church? There are certainly many wonderful Christians in the world who are not members of the church, and we admire and respect them very much. But once we have been baptized and received the gift of the Holy Ghost, we are changed forever. We become the children of the covenant, and our souls need the truths of the restored gospel, the priesthood and ordinances that follow, the power of the Book of Mormon, and the safety that comes from prophets and apostles. Speaking of the restoration, the Lord declared, righteousness will I send down out of heaven, and truth will I send forth out of the earth to bear testimony of mine only begotten. For I will raise up unto myself a pure people that will serve me in righteousness. This is who we are becoming. Think of the power of the Book of Mormon. No book teaches the atonement of Jesus Christ as strongly and as clearly as does the Book of Mormon. Regularly immersing ourselves in the Book of Mormon is a, brings a remarkable settling of our faith in Jesus Christ. Moreover, we need the ordinances and covenants we remember and renew each week as we take the sacrament. Our faith grows and develops as we regularly and consistently work to build our discipleship along with others who are committed as we are. Here are Gretel and Micah. I remember being in Young Women, so being like 12, and asking my dad that, like, why can't we just, like, you know, be at home or, like, I didn't you know, want to go to an activity. And he told me, like, sometimes we go for ourselves and then sometimes we go for the people that are there. And I've really felt it in my life. Like, even this last Sunday, 
I um, was struggling and I was able to be helped by somebody in, in the church. And then during the week, uh, one of my friends was struggling and I was able to like enlighten her. Uh, I remembered an analogy that I heard, but it kind of, he talked about, you know, you have a fire and you have coals within the fire and compare that to, to coming to church and being around others and um, sharing your light and knowledge and the truth with each other and learning from each other. Um, but he talked about when you take a coal out of fire, maybe you don't go to church one week or you don't read your scriptures one day, it's not going to immediately cause the coal to go dark, um, but you are going to remove yourself from the flame. And over time, uh, you know, one week turns into two, two weeks turn into three, months go by and suddenly you're dark and you're cold inside. And I think that's, that's a way that Satan gets us is by those degrees is, um, at least that's how he gets me. Going to church, continue to, to take the sacrament, um, to find ways to serve others, to be around others, um, to bear your testimony. Those are all ways that you can be firmly planted within the flame of the gospel so that you are burning bright. And when you get kicked out, just quickly get kicked back in. <laughs> President Dallin H. Oaks taught, members who forego church attendance and rely only on individual spirituality, separate themselves from these gospel essentials, the power and blessings of the priesthood, the fullness of the restored doctrine, and the motivations and opportunities to apply that doctrine. Finally, in the temple, we separate ourselves from the commotion of the world. We unselfishly serve others, and the endowment gives us more clarity to the difficulties and temptations before us. In the temple, we quietly ponder why we are here upon the earth and the power and glory of our Savior in making our return to our Heavenly Father possible. Listen to Jesse's comments. I've been thinking a lot about the temple because with all of the distractions, that's how I find that's where I'm able to find peace and redirect myself um, because it's a sacrifice to go, especially with so many exams and homework. It's never ending. The temple is something that I have tried to prioritize as my number one because I know that when I do that, everything else works out. I hope we all remember the beautiful story that President Worthen gave last week about his experience in the temple. The temple brings miracles to our lives. Next, consider diminishing the distractions and magnifying the good. We live in a world with enormous information and influences pushing against us. Entertainment, social media, the internet, philosophies from every direction. President Nelson, you remember him saying this, take charge of your own testimony. Don't pollute it with false philosophies of unbelieving men and women. As we seek to grow our faith, we will need to do our very best to diminish those things that weaken our judgment and our faith and to conscientiously magnify those things that build our character and strengthen our faith in Jesus Christ. Listen to several of your fellow students. I think uh, the world is just so noisy and um, a lot of times it can really uh, dampen your ability to feel the spirit, but there's just like the total opposite when you're um, looking, or not looking, I think, <laughs> um, when you're surrounding yourself with things that are going to uplift you and when you're um, choosing to, like, um, focus on the Christ-centered things and just how much more peaceful it is um, to focus on the good and just the uplifting things that are going to invite the Spirit rather than um, bring a lot of fear. I think that we all have questions like at different times and uh, I think the key is what sources we go to and that is the difference between whether or not we keep our faith or whether or not we slip from it 
and I've seen so many people who go to wrong sources. They just go to social media or they go to people who don't believe in the church and that can totally destroy their faith. But I feel like people who go to the prophets, they go to other people of faith and it can end up strengthening their faith when they feel like they're slipping. And I just feel like that is such a key to keeping your faith when you feel like you have questions. I really like the scripture that's in Mosiah that says, when you are in the service of your fellow beings, you are only in the service of your God. There's so much joy that comes when you're able to do something else for someone. And it feels kind of contagious. It's like you want to keep doing it after that because you feel those blessings of serving your Heavenly Father and also His children. When your faith is being attacked by those doubts in your own mind, then that's the time to turn to Jesus Christ. And I find that a lot of the things that strengthen our faith are the small things. Just saying a little prayer here and there, or just reading our scriptures, um, trying to take small moments to hear, hear the Spirit. Um, I find that those things strengthen our faith the most. And just striving to do those things in times of doubt can really help us. I know it can be difficult, um, especially in today's day and age, um, with all the distractions and all the confusion that the world is trying to throw at us through our social media. But um, personally, I try to fill my feed with um, gospel pages and with uplifting um, quotes and insights that will help me draw closer to Heavenly Father. And I know that when I see those posts and I share those posts with other people and I message them or I say, this reminded me of you, I just hope you're doing okay, that kind of thing. I know that that's what Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ want me to do. And I know that he, that's a way of ministering and that's a way of using technology and social media for good. And that's the way that Heavenly Father desires us to use it and to crowd out all of the noise and to focus on the good. Finally, realize that there will be tests in your life. There is no need to fear. Many will come not because of anything you did or didn't do. They just come. Life is that way. The Savior said that his Father maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. You've only lived two decades, but even in those two decades, you have already felt some of life's tests. As you listen to Claire and Benton, think of tests that you have faced and how your faith has grown during those times. My parents went through a pretty bad divorce when I was younger, and it really tested my faith because I didn't really know how to deal with it. and. Um, it really brought me uh, closer to Christ and it helped me understand the atonement a lot better because I think when you're younger you kind of think of the atonement as oh I make a mistake and I, I make a mistake and I repent and um, through this experience I realized that Christ overcame everything and he overcame all of our pain all of our suffering and he um, he gave me so much peace through this experience, and um, if I hadn't gone through it, I don't think I would have the amount of faith that I do in my uh, Heavenly Father, my Savior. I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona, um, but this particular suburb that I grew, in, grew up in was not overly populated with members of the church, and I had a pretty decent sized young men's group growing up as well. But of those senior boys that I'd grown up with, um, I was the only one that ended up going on a mission. And at that period of my life, I was slipping, we could say, because it's, it's easier to dim your light when other lights aren't shining as bright, if that makes sense. And so within this certain period of my life, I felt very strongly that if I didn't go on a mission soon, that I was gonna have some struggles. And so through prayer, scripture study, and, and the basics that we're familiar with, my Heavenly Father and my Savior Jesus Christ pulled me through to where I know I am today, um, regardless of the decisions that people I love made around me. The Lord comforted Joseph Smith. 
Thine adversity and thine affliction shall be but a small moment. And then if thou endure it well, God shall exalt thee on high. Lehi promised his son Jacob, God shall consecrate thine, affliction, thine afflictions for thy gain. These are the promises for the righteous. There is no need to be fearful about the tests of life. As your faith in Jesus Christ is firm, the tests of mortality will shape your eternal destiny. In summary, here are some of the important things I pray will strengthen your faith in Jesus Christ during the next five decades. Remember you are a son or daughter of God, and the spiritual feelings that draw you to him will grow as you respond to them. Keep as the burning, bright, powerful star in your life your hope in Jesus Christ. Look for the hand of the Lord in your life. Embrace the gifts and protections of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Diminish the distractions and magnify the good that focuses your attention on the Savior and his teachings. Be spiritually prepared for the challenges and tests that will come into your life. I want to give special thanks to my friends here on the stand who have strengthened us today with their faith and their experiences. You can see more of their outstanding insights and counsel on BYU social media. After sharing my testimony, I have asked Dr. Andy Crane and this gifted choir to lead us as we stand and sing three verses of how firm a foundation. The closing prayer will be offered by Claire Hadlock, my granddaughter. Your faith in Jesus Christ will bring you assurance in the choices you are making, happiness in good times and in challenges, and peace in knowing your eternal destiny. Remember, there is a power that can cause things to happen that need to happen, and that power comes from your faith in Jesus Christ. As the Lord's servant, I bless you that as you reach out to the Savior, you will feel his hands reaching out to you. I bless you that as you keep him central in your life, all will be well. I share with you my sure and certain witness that he lives that he is resurrected, and that he calls to each of us, come unto me. He makes eternal life possible. He appeared to the prophet Joseph Smith. His priesthood power is found in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. President Russell M. Nelson is his prophet upon the earth. One day we will all kneel at his feet, and all the world will confess that he is the only begotten of the Father, the King of kings, the noble Son of God. I testify that to his true disciples, he gives the assurance of the hymn we will now sing, Fear not, I am with thee. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand upheld by my righteous, omnipotent hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. No. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that Elder Anderson would come and speak to us today. Please bless us that we can have faith in Jesus Christ and let that lead us in our lives. And please help us that we can take any promptings that we had during his talk and apply them into our lives. And we're so grateful that we can attend this wonderful university and all of the opportunities that it gives us. And please bless all the missionaries around the world that they can be safe and find those in the gospel. And we're so grateful for our prophets and apostles and please bless them. And we're so grateful for our savior, Jesus Christ, and all that he has done for us. And I say these things in the name of, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. This has been a live broadcast of a BYU campus devotional. The address today was given by Elder Neil L. Anderson. Find links to the full text, audio, and video of this address within the week at speeches.byu.edu. Don't miss next week's live devotional address at this same time with Elder Kevin S. Hamilton, a General Authority 70 of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and download the free BYU Radio app for episodes of the Finding Center podcast, a daily half hour of inspiration and spiritual focus. BYU Devotionals are a production of BYU Broadcasting.